mainly is that we got to um, keep God first with everything, with faith and fitness. Um, with number one, you were saying how it both, um, they're two instruments that um, our physical body is like a suitcase in which, you know, we sew with our soul and our spirit, and they're all going hand in hand. Hand in hand. So faith and fitness look like both of these hands. Faith, fitness. They, they're just like this, but they one you can see and one you can't. And I was telling Gina, Gina lost seven pounds last week and was fine. You know, she was happy about it, but then she gained a pound back. It just fell apart. I mean, just, just fell apart. Wouldn't call me back on Thursday, didn't exercise yesterday, over one pound. And so we do the same thing with faith. We pray about something. We fast about something on Tuesday. And if it ain't fixed by Wednesday, we stop going to church. We stop praying. We just, we say, God don't work. See how we do? And it's the same thing with fitness. If we don't lose that whole 10 pounds in two days, we, we, we done. <laughs> and, and those are the two things, these faith and this fitness. We just give up if it don't do it immediately. And they're not pimped out by what you want. Faith and fitness takes time. It takes devotion, it takes commitment, it takes dedication, and it takes perseverance. Which means even on my bad days when I think right. God is not working something out, I have to still be faithful over the fact that he said I'm doing it, stand on that promise no matter what. Because faith is the stuff of things we're hoping for, and it's evidence of things we can't see. Same thing with fitness. Fitness is not going to always produce you six days in six weeks. But that doesn't mean that you give up and start going back to McDonald's and staying in the bed and not working out. You cannot give up on these two things. These two things are the anchors of your life. They represent your body and your soul. And without your body, you can't take care of your kids. You can't do your job. You can do nothing without your body being strong and fit. And the more strong your soul and your spirit is, the more it's going to drive your body. And so we have got to put God first because the word of God is the fuel of our souls. In addition to Matthew 6.33, Matthew 4.4 4 says we should not live by bread alone, but we're going to talk about that in the food part. But we got to put God in this thing because we keep God first, because we pray before we work out every day. Guess what? We're seeing 10, 15, 20, 30 pounds come off people. Hallelujah. It's not by our power and it's not by our might. But it's by the spirit of the living God. And when you take that attitude of it not being by your power, not being by your might, but by the spirit of the living God, guess what? You take that attitude on your job. You take it into your marriage. You take it when you're dealing with your kids. You put God in everything. And when God is in it, guess what? Divine order falls in place. That's why we start. And the only way we're going to get tight and tone, ladies and gentlemen, is to focus on that Matthew 6.33. And that is seeking God first in his kingdom and his righteousness and everything else we need to be added to us. What's number two? Feed your soul. Feed my soul. And three portals. What kind yes. of foolishness is that? We can't even see our souls. How do you feed a soul? Gina? Eugenia Staley. You're feeding your soul through, uh, well, you got the three portals that it goes through, your eyes, your ears, and your mouth. And you're feeding your soul through the things like you're listening to, preferably inspirational music or sermons, etc. So either way, we're eating. When we open up our eyes, we're eating. When we open, our ears don't close, so they're always eating. And, of course, our mouths are fed by what we put into our mouths physically. But also those port those same portals, you can be affected in your spirit. That's why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel, they, they were they were very picky about what they ate because they knew that the very the very literal food that they put in their mouth would impact impact their acuity, they, their spiritual sensitivity, the way that they learned their thinking and all that stuff was affected by them eating the king's meat. And when I did a study the guards and the people that are preparing the meat for them were telling them about how they had killed their enemies and fed them to the animals that those meat that meat came from. And they were like, oh, no, we can't be eating no animals that ate some humans. And that's when they said, look, let us just right. eat some vegetables. But but they knew the significance of their diet and how it affected their whole being, not just their body. 
animals eating humans. And that's what they said. They said we took our enemies, we killed them, we fed them to these animals. That's why they so fat and whatever. And they, they were just like, oh. Um, so, and then when we're listening, Dina, right, we talked about the fact that the ears don't never close. You can tune people out, but your ears are always right. open. Why in the world would God do that? When you die and get in your coffin, these ears still going to be open unless somebody or you plug them up. They were born open. When you die, your ears are going to be open. It's telling you that God wants you to be able to hear before you can even see. Because when you're born, your eyes are typically closed. Some babies are coming out now with their eyes open. But sure enough, when you die, don't nobody want to see no dead person's eyes open. So he, he's allowed the mouth to close. He's allowed the eyes to close that are portals. But the ears are always open. And what are we doing now with the ears? We're filling them up with these earbuds. And so God can't have talk to us if he wanted to. Because we always got something going on in the background. Some people can't even function unless they got what called, what's called background noise. And it's, it's awful. So we're feeding the soul. And, and what, what you're seeing and hearing, so for example, if I'm doing this and you're watching the news right now, and then the news shows Burger King and you have issues with Burger King or ice cream or Krispy Kreme, whatever it is, now that's feeding you while I'm trying to feed you. And one going to win because I'm not there. So the rap music, some of this music right. is economically designed and all that stuff. So you should always have something going not only in your mouth, it's edifying, but your your eyes and your ears is edifying your spirit because your spirit is going to drive your body into the discipline to become the whole person that God wants. He wants everything. He don't just want you fit. That's part of it. But he wants your heart. He wants your mind. He wants your soul. He wants your finances straight. He wants your kids straight. He wants your family. He's, he's a complete God. He's a perfect God. So he's perfecting that, and he can't perfect it if you're tuning him out, eating anything that somebody put in front of you that tastes good. I'm talking about it don't taste good. We get past that. Mature people eat for purpose, not pleasure. And then also, finally, when we pray, the hands should be folded. The, the, the knees should be bowed. When you fold your hands, it means my, my hands are not doing anything else. They're not preoccupied with my assignments. They're here to you, God. I'm humble myself. When I close my eyes, it means I'm shutting off everything because I don't want to see anything but you. When I bow my head, I'm, I'm being humble. When I pray, I'm shutting off the world around me and everything. My ears are still open, and I'm bowing down before the Most High God, and I'm saying, here I am, Lord. I really need you to pay me attention, and I really want to give you my attention, and I want to commune with you. And that's what number two is. All this has to precede you talking about, oh, yeah, I'm just not going to eat that. And then you wind up eating it the next day. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And your soul is all jammed up because you're trying to get your body to do something, but your, your soul is out of order. So we're talking about feeding yourself in the spirit and getting your spiritual body together first. What's number three? Number three is rest. Rest. Resting by giving things over to God, doing uh -huh. the best that you can do, and just letting go and let God do the rest. And um, in the initial one, you said we should be able to say the serenity prayer. The to serenity help us prayer. against that, I guess, means. That, because we just all over the place. What am I going to do about that? What am I going to do? And, and, and we go to sleep. I think I said this, Gina, this was also rest, how we lay down in our bed. And we literally don't know what's going to happen right, right. while we sleep. We don't know if the bomb will hit the house. We don't know if the tornado will come in. But we, we're so easy to rest physically, but we want to rest the same way spiritually. We'll lay down. We don't know if somebody's going to come in and kill us, rob us, or anything. But we, we're so confident that when we go to bed, we're going to get back up. We need to rest the same level of confidence right, in right. God's ability to keep us when we awake. That's a spiritual thing at that point. Serenity right. prayer says, Lord, grant me the serenity or peace to accept the things that I cannot change. And then give me the courage to move forward and change the things that I can. And then the wisdom to be able to discern between what I can't change and what I can change. Because we're confused because we don't have wisdom. And knowing, you know what, I really can change this. All I need to do is apply some godly principles. All I need to do is ask God. All I need to do is get in order. All I need to do is be disciplined. So I really can do that. I've been telling myself I can't, but I can't. I just can't do it the way I think I was trying to do it. I got to make some adjustments. And then there's some things that we can't change. We keep trying to change, and they're unchangeable. We can't change who our parents was. We can't change the mistakes we made yesterday. We can only do what we can do. And the rest, you see, that, that gives you peace. That's why the prayer starts off by saying, grant me serenity, which is peace. 
to rest in God. Peace. Because I'm telling you, some people, they're like, well, I just don't know what I'm going to do about so-and-so and such-and-such and so-and-so, and I don't know about that, and I don't know about that, and I went here and I did that, and I had a divorce, and I had it. Okay, what you going to do? Okay, how's it going to work out? Let's let it go. 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 We got to learn how to rest. And then, of course, a physical rest, a third of your day, right? We said we said no less than a quarter of your day, which is six hours. You you barely making it at six hours. That's one quarter of your day. It's supposed yep. to be dedicated to sleep. And at that point, when you go to sleep, is when your body fights off the cancer cells. It detoxifies itself. It repairs itself. It's supposed to actually be um, taking a break from digestion in that sleep phase. That's why they say a break and a fast because your body's actually supposed to go through a healing while it's sleep. That's why we're supposed to go to sleep. You're supposed to be up all day and all night. It's the reason the sun go down. The sun going down telling you, okay, time for you to go to bed. It's time for you to calm down. Time for you to get some rest. Time for you to lay your body down. Let your muscle repair itself. Let your body repair itself. Calm down now. But what do we do? We be up to 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning back up by 4. And mad, irritated sick in our bodies because we don't know how to rest on no level spiritual mental physical and, and none of it we just run and ram because the world say go 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 and we're on we're like hamsters running on a little wheel on a little hamster wheel and going absolutely nowhere wasting energy wasting time wasting talents doing nothing but just but we going we think we doing something because we, we we at least we're moving i'm getting it what are you getting you ain't going nowhere Rest, rest, rest. What's number four? Number four is prayer. Um, we're supposed to have a personal and private prayer life. Um, you know, one of the things you said that we need to have a come to Jesus meeting every day because it'll help keep our souls focused and strong. What is a come to Jesus meeting, Gina? <laughs> When you, well, my come to Jesus meeting is when you get me one-on-one -on -one and we just have to go through these things that I've eaten and my exercising or not exercising. <laughs> so, so really, and then talk about God and all that. Huh? And then add God to the equation. Right. So me and you, me as your trainer, I, we have a come to Jesus meeting, but as Christians, all of us need to have a, a, a powwow with Jesus, too, and be like, Lord, show me any error in my life. Show me where I'm not living up to all that you call me. Show me, because your pastor and the teachers and your trainer, I can't show you stuff about yourself, because God knows the secret parts of you that you'll never show me. So when you have a real come to Jesus meeting in your prayer life, not just, Jesus, I need this, fix this, heal this, help that, open this door, give me, give me, give me, give me, but when you come to him and say, you know what? I'm, I could be in error. In some areas, I know I'm in error. In some areas, I don't. I just need you to come in and tell me where I need to fix some stuff, where I need to walk more worthy, what I need to correct. That's the come to Jesus we need to have in our personal prayer life. But most of our prayer life is spent asking. And that's okay because the Bible says asking you shall receive. But sometimes we need to ask God for revelation and truth about who we are in him, who he is to us, and where we're supposed to be at this point in time in our lives. That prayer life will get you going, but it got to be specific. The Bible says effectual fervent prayers in the book of James. The effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail much. And that has to be strategic and intentional prayer of God. Anywhere I'm, that I'm sinning against you, anywhere that I'm falling short, help me, deliver me, correct me. And he'll do it. He'll convict you. If you stay in that humble place of, I don't want to be wrong, I don't want to have another 40 years of my life doing stuff the wrong way, being rhetorically rich, religious, and missing out on your righteousness. I so told y'all earlier this morning, the theme for this month is righteousness birth results. And that's doing things the right way will get the results that God intended for us to have in the first place. Whether they be physical, whether they be mental, whether they be emotional, whether they be psychological, whether they be social, whatever it is, if we get it right and we operate right, not just doing something to be doing it, but operating that righteousness that we talked about in Matthew 6.33, the results that we want to see are going to come through. And they may not be the results that you thought you wanted, right? They'll be better than that. Because God's way is always better than our way. Right. And that's what I was telling you, Gina. I said, Gina, listen. If you get this thing right, 
And we just talked about this last night. I said, if you get this thing right, you can go beyond weight loss. You can literally be fit. You can literally look, people look at you and say, man, I know you work out. It's a difference between losing weight and being fit. And, and what we want to do is we want what we want, but God wants his will to be done in our lives, which is greater than what we want. And we can accomplish that if we had that faith, that prayer life that goes beyond uh, Santa Claus, make a wish foundation. And like I told y'all, God is not Burger King having your way. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. All right, what's number five, y'all? We getting through the spiritual thing. Good, we doing good. Number five, five minutes of focus. Hallelujah. And you did Psalm one nineteen sixty four, um, and one of it was like praising. Um, and that verse was saying, seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgment. Seven and pretty times much a day. that was like one that you could have been focusing. That was one nineteen what? Psalms one nineteen one sixty four. Psalms 119, 164, seven times a day. I wrote that in my book, seven times a day. That, that, man, we, we missing it, ain't we? We don't praise God, but on Sunday, right? <laughs> we it short. Lie, lie. Seven times seven is what, 49? That's what that Judy Lee. Y'all remember I was telling y'all the Jubilee year was 49? Seven times a day times seven. Yeah. That's 49. That's why we ain't getting no Jubilee. We don't praise God at all. We don't even, some of us don't praise him in church either. I'm getting some Jubilee, and I'm saying it because I'm praising him. Every time I think of it, I praise him because I'm telling you, I'm getting some Jubilee, okay? Y'all can say this. Y'all can sit there. I can say what y'all want to with sit you, there. With your I'm mouth. getting some Jubilee. I told y'all a closed mouth don't get fed. That's why I'm just saying, hallelujah. Oh, glory. I need to be fed in my soul. I see some starving people. And I'm going to be fed because I'm going to let God hear me. Seven times a day will I praise him. So we were talking about that five minutes of focus and, you know, just, just focusing on, you know, snatching snatch five minutes randomly out your day. Open up the songs or, you know, calling a loved one or, you know, whatever God leads you to do. But giving just five minutes to refocus and regather yourself because there's so many distractions out there. Um, even before you eat, right. I think that before we make a choice about eating, before putting it in our mouth, five minutes to think about it. That's what the chicken, no chicken, no chocolate, no cheese challenge wasn't about the actual food. It was about you thinking about, is it got chicken in it? Is it cheese? Okay, I can't have that because of cheese. Just giving you that, that pause before you go forward with your eating. So five minutes of focus. I assign people some five, some focus points because I just know how to, they just get distracted so easy. Reese, what did I tell you to focus on? Or did I didn't have to give you one? Gina, I gave you a focus, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> you did. Give us a day our daily bread. <laughs> Kim, you be trying, don't know. All right, well, okay, now we get into the fit, the fitness part. What's number six, y'all? That's right, the eating. Look, let me take that powerful right there. You can't beat that. What, what was it, Gina? Strategic eating. And that's where you wanted us, um... I just lost it for a moment. You would just kind of talk about fasting and stuff and um, how lean muscle is a luxury item, but during a fast or a famine, because the body is starving, fasting, we're burning more calories, the body will say, I don't need you. So it'll start getting rid of that first. So did I say muscle is a bad thing? No. Why, why would your body want to get rid of muscle? burning too many calories it's too expensive so what do you do if you want to fast and you don't want to lose your muscle gina do you eat popcorn eat that's organic with no gluten <laughs> no eat more protein but you're fasting so can you eat the protein if you're fasting no, nope, you're drinking it like you're six and sexy or um, the vegetable juice, I think, the vegetable juice you said, or bean juice. 
Okay. Awesome. Way violent. Way Yeah. Gina, what's the minimum you need to do if you're fasting? What's the minimum protein intake you need to do if you're fasting? 60 grams. And if you're not fasting, how many do you, how much grams of protein do you need? Um, a hundred. Well, for me, I think you said 150 grams so, protein. So how do we come up with that? Like, if I if I really want to um figure out how many grams of protein I need to be eating a day, how do I come up with that number? Um, well. For me, I just see how many grams are in whatever food I'm trying to eat. Mainly the fruits and vegetables have a lot of the proteins in it already. That's true. Because the, the protein, even though a be some beans may only have, not beans, but like stream beans, they may only have two grams of protein. Mm -hmm. But really, that's equivalent to that plant-based protein is equivalent to six, six grams of the quality of it. Is, is equivalent to about six grams of animal protein. So, Gina, what happens is, everybody, oh. what, we, what we're talking about is how much protein do we really need, and really that's based on how much, how much, how many pounds you are. It's really like almost a gram of protein per pound of body weight. However, okay. I'm estimating yours at the body weight you want to be, not at the body weight you are. Gina. Okay. That's how you came Okay. Up. That's how you okay. came up with 150. Right. That's how you came up 150. Because I'm estimating yours not at the weight you are, but at the weight you want to be. Okay. And we've fallen short. I can tell you right now, we're so used to trying to lose weight by starving ourselves to death, we're under eating the protein. I'm telling you. Mm -mm, it's not a slave wall. We're overfed and undernourished. That's why I was asking you, Gina, popcorn is a good snack, but it's not a staple food that's going to help us get going. It's a snack. I put, I put right. popcorn in, our, in, my six, in my super six-pack snacks. That's a snack. That's not a meal. No. Okay. Get back on your way, Bob. I watch these people, girl. They're off the chain. They look for any opportunity. Gina, guess what Teresa just said? <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> did, did you let it go? She be spaghetti and some other night. With the ice cream on my we just said I need to get her more. And that'll be her excuse. Yeah. Half a slap of ribs tomorrow and all that. So whatever. You said I need to eat more food. And I ain't say that, did I? No, you I said, what I say? More food. <laughs> For your target weight. I mean, I should have said, said, I need to eat more protein. The one that's the one that, the one that near rate, the one that's near rate right now. I'm talking to her yesterday. She must have been, yeah, why is going home eating eggs and drinks? You know, after we do the workout. And um, so I said, well, I'm concerned about you eating grits because I know you ain't no plant grits. You put some on the grits. Show enough butter and uh, jelly in the grits. <laughs> You know what, what, what Teresa just told me? Oh, I need it real soft, too, like I ain't here. I need to eat more food then. Oh. I said, no, you don't. No, you don't. You need to eat more protein. Because let me tell you something, Gina. Teresa be the one that got a half a slab of ribs, some spaghetti, and had a milkshake after morning come out. I need more food. Oh. Joanna said, Joanna told us at the mountain, I wrote it down. She got a paper and a pencil in her hand. I wrote it down. She said, I need to eat more. I didn't say that. I said, you need to eat more protein. Oh, protein. Okay, y'all, what, what's the next one? What's the next one? Portable foods. And you said you um, need some more. Portable um, foods. Give us some more. Okay, what, what's some of the portable foods that we uh, came up with? Sardines. Tuna, sardines, eggs. eggs. Protein chips, popcorn, yeah, protein. apples, pears, carrots, cucumbers, things that you can take with you, keep in your car. 
keeping your bag at work, keeping your desk at work. You can take six to sexy with you anywhere you go. What's some more portable foods? What about Keebler crackers? No. <laughs> no. But if you're going to eat the, look, 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 Gina, if you're going to eat the cookie even crackers, what can you do? Can you eat just five? I'm okay with not eating the ice. Okay? No. I'm just being honest. No. I know that's I can't right. open five. Okay, have y'all tried those Revita, those Revita crisps? I was looking at an article just yesterday and was saying that those are one of the power foods because they're so whole grain and Revita, I believe it's spelled R-Y-V-I-T-A. Now for a little pack, it's going to cost you $3, but I figure bread costs $3 anyway. And um, those are so much better for you because it's got like 6 grams of fiber in it and uh, low fat for two, two of those crisps and you can put some um, organic I don't trust y'all with certain stuff. I ain't gonna lie. You know, I started talking about peanut butter, jelly, and butter, and all that. It just goes too far. So I try to stop. You know, that's why I don't like people eating nuts because they be eating nuts like it's popcorn, and nuts have a lot of fat in them. And what about pistachio stuff? What is pistachio? That's what I mean. It's a um, it's a seed. You see what I'm talking about? That's funny. <laughs> So walnut, not a seed. I just know they say pistachio. You and you wanted to hear that, right? You want a confirmation well, I, you can eat nah, pistachio. <laughs> I'm just trying don't. to figure out an uh, almond come with a shell on it, the walnut come with a shell with it, just like the pistachio. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what the difference is. What make that a seed? A seed. <laughs> he like it. <laughs> now you know what a real seed is, like a pumpkin. You had to know the pumpkin come out of like the seed or the apple yeah. seed. But yeah. It, it's a difference between. Oh, y'all, let me show y'all something since Teresa brought it up. Look. Oh, look at that. Look at that. No. Y'all, look. Y'all see this? I'd rather work and get the shell off of them. It's no shell on pumpkin seeds. These come out of a pumpkin. Just come oh, straight out of a pumpkin. Well, how the, what about the ones that's got. I, have y'all seen a pumpkin seed with a, with, with a shell on it? They got, they got white shell on it. I've eaten pumpkin seeds all my life. Did they, they, they was roasted? They in the bag. Yeah. You should. Y'all killing me. I know that's a pumpkin seed. But they be in These a. These are raw. They be in a. You um, said an uh, organic seed. raw pumpkin seed. I know, but they come out of a white shell. You, you ain't never had them in the white shell. I know what she's talking about. I've seen them in Walmart. Of course, of course you know what she's talking about. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're in Walmart. They're in a white bag. That's right, Gina. I they, just don't eat them. They sauce it. Yeah. Yeah. These but you raw. can get the ones that are unsalted too. They're not good. These are raw. All right. What's she say? Uh, darn it. I got them. On Thank time. you, Kim. But Kim was always a good student. Kim, Kim almost like uh, Darlene. Whenever I was down there. Kim was the, like you one over of <laughs> See, Kim heard me say we supposed to eat for purpose and not, not pleasure. That's right. They grown yeah, and mature right. people eat for purpose and not pleasure. And you hear what they say? <laughs> they not good. They not good. <laughs> they may not be good to you, but they good for you. you. Okay. <laughs> hey, Gina, we got. <laughs> A cashew. <laughs> a cashew ain't a, ain't a nut. It's a seed. <laughs> the pumpkin seeds is the pumpkin yeah. seed. Like so that. so if it was a seed, then that mean you could eat all you want to. Okay. They say they say seeds don't have as bad as nuts. That's true. I guess. So if I call it a seed, even though it's a nut, it made me feel better about eating it. I just yeah, I got I got to strip back all these layers. <laughs> okay, Gina, let's move on to number seven. What's number seven? Oh, number seven. Um, 
That was seven. Number eight is hydration. Hydration. What does um, that mean? Water, drink water. Yeah. Um, water. You want us to drink water intentionally every day. Drink water every hour. Um, have a glass of water before we go to bed and drink at least eight ounces of water when we get up in the morning. Why do we need to drink water when we get up in the morning? Just because? It starts our metabolism. Right? It does. It does. It boosts your metabolism. It'll help get our bodies going. Help get your body going. But what did we say happen while we sleep? What's happening while we sleep? Oh, the digestion thing. And so it gets, it gets rid of the toxins, right? It gets rid of the toxins. It flushes your kidneys. It flushes whatever work your body was doing. That water goes in there just like a water hose or whatever. And just pushes the rest of what your body, it's like sweeping out the debris that your body just got finished doing in a fast. Because you've been on a fast. If you went to bed, let's just say 10 o'clock, and you don't wake up to 4, that's a six-hour fast. But most people used to go to bed about 10, 11 o'clock and get up about 6. And then they break the fast with, with some alcohol or okay. a cheese biscuit from, from Chick-fil-A. All right, so what we're talking about, water. Um, and then we need to understand that water is more than about weight loss, that water is about... Your eyes blinking, your brain, the fluid on your brain is operating through water and hydration. So when you're dehydrated, it can mess up your acuity and your focus and your alertness. Um, your kidneys, water is, 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 you know, every every vital organ in your body is is operating with fluid. And the fluid that it needs is not Coca-Cola or tea or coffee. The fluid that it needs to operate and function, function optimally is water. When you swallow the, your saliva glands is just swallowing randomly is based on your water consumption. So even though they say, oh, if you drink a lot of water, you lose weight. Well, you're losing weight because you're giving your body what it needs to process toxins. And, and the reason that we're not getting the weight loss that we need is because we, 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 we don't, we're not clean. We're just full of toxins. And so the food is getting stuck in there and there's nothing there to get it out. We don't have clean systems. We need a detox. When I, when I um when I was off the offline this morning, I ran into a guy. Reason it took me so long to come back, and he was asking me about my ninjas because he had seen them. And he said, um, "Hey, you know, I saw those ninjas on your um thing. How I was telling them they were good." He said, "Well, he said I healed myself by going on a juice fast about ten years ago." I said, "You did?" He said, "Yeah." He said, "I was having these migraines and I was sick." He said, "And I had to do it." I went um. He said, "I got I start juicing." And I went on a juice fast for 10 years, I mean, for 10 days. He said he literally healed himself. And most people would say, oh, you didn't heal yourself. God healed yourself. I, I get his humility because he didn't say it in arrogance. He said it like, I humbled myself. I disciplined myself. I shut my mouth to food. I shut my mouth, mouth to fried chicken or whatever it is that I had going on. And that's how he's saying, God gave me the knowledge. And then I had the discipline to operate in the wisdom of doing that. And it healed my body. That's what he said, white man. So God God is telling us, talking to us and showing us, and I told us that's what we talked about last year, moving, you know, I said last year we had to move from the knowledge to practice. Oh, I know. I know. I know, but I'm not practicing. So he knew, and I think when he when he moved into saying that he healed himself, he says, you know, I knew the knowledge and the power of, of fasting. I knew the knowledge of fasting and, and filling my body with the nutrients that's in juice. And so, therefore, I bought myself under the subjection of the knowledge and used the wisdom to discipline myself, shut down my desires, and move forward. And that's where his healing was birthed. So God can give us the knowledge all he all we want, you know, and, and give us the, the information and all that. But it's up to us to submit to that, subject ourselves to that, and, and faith without works is dead. So we got the faith and we talk about the Lord and the Lord can make, but we're not really allowing the Christ to operate in us so we can do all things. People are like, I can't go to that. Ah, ooh, ooh, ah. You could, you're just not submitting to it. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with y'all the way I'm dealing with y'all because we're just not there mentally yet in certain areas. Like, like, okay, for example, Gina, I hate to keep using you because you're such a good example. Um, we went to, me and Gina, remember I told y'all we went to Blue Tuesdays and we had no salad. So I just asked Gina yesterday in our cup of Jesus meat well, and I told her that, that, that Maria, no, Gina told me that Maria ate the full fat ranch dressing. Now, there was a choice there. 
between the full fat ranch dressing and the low fat ranch dressing. And Gina said, yeah, but it don't taste good. <laughs> what I just said. <laughs> and I, I'm wondering, how do you know it don't taste good? You never gave it a chance. Like, like I just, I told her, I said, Gina, it's just not a big, it's not a big of a difference between that low fat dressing and that ranch, that ranch, especially if you never give it a chance. Yeah, it don't taste that big of a difference, but I think it's all still mental. Whereas I just haven't, I'm just not going to submit to making this choice of doing better because I just can't mentally. Even though you could, like you literally could do it, you're capable. Like some people can't fast because they're diabetic, or some people can't fast because of whatever. But we're actually capable of doing it. Just very All right, so that's that's that with hydration. What's the next? Well, I mean, food, no. fasting. Oh. Ten is fasting. No, number nine is the food cut off too fasting when you sleep overnight. Um, you were telling us that we need to eat our last meal by okay. 7 o'clock p.m. Okay, um, now how many of y'all have... Body was the beginning of the last portion of digestion. How many of y'all have done that? Stop mm-hmm. eating at 7. How many of y'all have stopped eating at Teresa, that's why you look at dinner. You stop eating at 7? It's hard. <laughs> and Gina. Yeah. Oh, my God. I be... It I is. Was, Get home, it's time for me to stop eating. <laughs> and Lord knows we can't stop eating now. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> it's people that go over in third world companies, countries, they can't eat for days. And if we don't get an extra meal before we go to bed, Lord have mercy. We starving. I'm like, oh my God. But, but if you're going to do that, you have to make sure that you're finished eating. Like you have to be strategic even with that. And all this, all this is is establishing discipline. Right? So I gotta really, if I'm going to eat, I better go ahead and eat. <laughs> because I, my body's gonna need to eat. Okay, you got that portal. See, Gina said, not Gina, Teresa said she be stuck in traffic, so she can't get nothing to eat because she in traffic, so she has a portable food with her. She has apples in her car. She just reach over and get one. And that apple is good. That apple is a serious snack. I love it. Love apples. <laughs> Who feel like they they love French fries more than this? <laughs> <laughs> Go on and tell the truth and shame the devil. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all. <laughs> you can do it. You can train your taste buds. Did you know your taste buds are trainable? You let yourself get hungry, and then you make a good, healthy food choice. Your body will want that again if you let yourself get hungry. But if you're just feeding food, you know, your mind through food, then, of course, it's, it's going to, you know, divert back to Snickers and French fries. You know, that's true. I keep telling you about the time when I was hungry, and, that, and, and I didn't eat big, big bars. <laughs> I couldn't stand a fig new. And I was like, no. And one day, that's all was in my car was a fig new. <laughs> You, did you hear that, Gina? Did y'all hear that, uh, yes. Jack, uh, Camille, Jack, 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 Jackie? Y'all hear what Teresa just said? Yes. Yes. So, so she let herself get hungry. She said she didn't like yes. big news. And a lot of this stuff we don't like, even like the ranch dressing thing, is because we have not allowed ourselves the opportunity to get hungry, first of all, and then try the stuff that's a better choice for us. You can do prunes and raisins. You can do prunes and raisins. I'm giving y'all prunes. Okay. Even the little, you know, the prunes come in those little packs now. Those little, uh, like they, like almost like in a candy pack now. And you can keep those in your purse. And just pop one of those in. Now, what is that? That's full of fiber. It's good nutrients for you. Prunes are real powerful. And, and a lot of this has to do with digestion again. So that prune is going to help you out with that. What, what, uh, yeah, yeah, look. So look, if we if y'all can cut off at seven, if you get hungry, you drink your protein shake or get you some almond milk or something like that, or a vegetable drink or something like that, you're gonna let your body not only lose weight but heal itself. I'm telling you, people are sick. They're getting sick out here. The kidneys are failing, liver cancer, can all kind of stuff. 
and, and it's bigger than it's bigger than this thing is bigger than just weight loss. This is about healing, 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 holistic healing, establishing discipline and control. That's why fasting is so important because we do need food, but it shouldn't it shouldn't pimp us like it's doing. And being able to control your eating will give you control over a lot of the other areas in which we struggle in life. Okay, what's the last thing, y'all? Cheat day. Ah, here we go. Yeah. Gina. Gina. Yes. Did you yes, have a cheat day? Did you have a cheat day this week? No, ma'am. Okay. So you're not gonna get no um no nachos from Taco Bell today? No. I don't want any more of that. <laughs> what you want, Gina? What you want? Tell us what you want. I I think I'm gonna get my candy today. I want my candy. The Stephanie bar. Almond toffee. Girl, shut your yeah. mouth. You like that too, Gina? <laughs> Yes, best candy ever. Oh my god! Oh lord! What? Is that Darlene or Jackie? I can tell you something. I done did with a symphony bar. Symphony bar. Jackie. Yes. You never told me you was eating symphony bar. I mean, I haven't eaten one of them. No, 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 no. I, I haven't eaten one in a long, long time, and that's why I don't. That's why I don't. <laughs> Bye -bye that bitch. You making Gina feel real good. Cause Gina glad that you you Gina. I, I, feel, I, I feel her pain. God knows I feel her pain. I ain't even going. I don't care. Ooh. I ain't not even going. Touch my lips. Gina, I'm not letting that poison touch my lips. Cause she know once she go back into yes. Egypt, she's gonna be stuck. Yes. And I won't. I won't get out until I eat at least ten of them. Oh, <laughs> I tell you, I'm over the top. <laughs> she really is. Teresa pulled up. I just want one. That's all. You want a little, little size of that big bar? That big bar of symphony. Let me call the rest of the cheaters and see what they, what they did. <laughs> you know they gonna know I'm calling about they cheat. Day. Nah, let, let me call the rest of the cheaters. I'm gonna run past that symphony bar since she bought that. Oh, you know what, y'all? We should do it. We should do a food cheaters thing. You know how they do that cheaters. And they bust those people. <laughs> I need to do one of those right now. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Okay, I got, I got a confession, okay? Y'all want to hear my confession? Gina, so you won't yeah. feel so bad. And Joanna, and yes, Joanna, please. Joanna caught me and I lied. I lied right in her face. Right in my face. What, uh, this, this was about, probably about three weeks ago. Joanna came, I went to a family dollar. And I had a big bag of potato chips. And Joanna bust through oh. there and she said, put them down. <laughs> and I said, they ain't for me, they ain't for me. <laughs> I said, they ain't for me. She knew I was lying. I was trying with a straight face, so I wouldn't be in. I wouldn't be in because I wanted them chips. <laughs> And, but I did feel a little guilty at first, and I was like, I'm all in now. It's over with. And Gina, it was a big bag, uh -huh. a big old bag, okay? Oh, wow. It was a big family. It was, it was, it was a family. Yeah, not family a regular bag. big bag. That's the right. family size. It was a family size bag for $3.50. And she didn't even know uh -oh, I was coming. Oh, it's about to need a charge, auntie. She didn't even she didn't even know I was coming. The, the baby dollar, the fifty dollar. I wouldn't have went in there, but I needed some paper towel or something. Yeah. I walk in there and she flying through there with a big old bag of potato chips. I'm talking Ooh. about the family size. Tell Auntie I, like I, I, need, I need to charge her phone. Anybody else got some cheats that they did this week? Confession is good for the soul. So then last week when Joanna said something about the uh, potato chips, potato chips, uh, what you say something about they lay on your uh, Oh, Gina, Gina said, yeah. Well, I sent out the waist. article on, yeah. the, on the Facebook, but when Gina read the article, she said, she said now she's going to see potato chips as a bag of bellies. Oh, that's good. That's good. Well, in the article, it was saying that potato chips go straight to your waistline, right, Gina? Yeah. 
It, it was like saying that out of everything, the way that fat is and potato chips or whatever, it'll go straight to your waistline. Because me, because I was trying to get y'all to eat those protein chips. Yeah, right. And she was like, they don't taste like laser. I was like, Nina, it's, it's not do the same thing. Laser. And lo and behold, in my inbox, those right there. Those are those are protein chips. You see them? I've been looking for them. Right there, you see those. And so they got 21 grams of protein, like only one gram, gram of carbs. Where you get them from, Jada? Stop, Jada. GNC. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll go there and get me some. I got some in my car. Don't bounce the ball in the house. Don't bounce the ball in Aussie. All right, what you have? Shanette. Y'all learning something today. Shanette. I'm here. I'm here. Do you have any cheats this week? No, just today. You had a cheat in what, what you had? one day. I had a half a piece of pizza. You had some pizza? Uh-huh. Oh, those little candies. What, what, what kind of pizza did you say you had, Shawnette? Uh, 50 of them. Uh, um, pepperoni pizza? A pepperoni pizza? Darlene was saying that yeah. if we, um, Darlene was saying if we, if everybody do what they're supposed to do, no, no, it's Coco. If everybody do what they're supposed to do, it's no longer a cheat, it's actually a treat. Because, you know, we're supposed to get, like you said, you're supposed to treat yourself on Saturday. Because that's when most people spend time with their family or whatever. Yeah. But if you cheated during the week, you really shouldn't treat yourself on Saturday. Right. Which most people are cheating all week long and then still getting a treat on Saturday. Did you, did you have a cheat? Um, did you? Yes, I did. What did you have? I had, I had a slice of pizza. Oh, you had a slice same, of pizza. The same one that Shawnette had? Yes. Okay, y'all went in together? Okay. Yes. That's cool. Well, so Gina, the only one that didn't really cheat this week. I didn't cheat this week. <laughs> So Jackie, Jackie and Shawnette, that was actually a treat for y'all because y'all hadn't cheated throughout the week, right? Right, right, because trying to practice clean eating. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. Good. We didn't and have Gina, anything you else, you so it wasn't like we just chose the pizza. Yeah, what happened now? Huh? That was our only option. Shawnette said we, we didn't have anything else. It, it, it was... It wasn't like we just chose to eat the pizza. That's what we had. And, okay, and I got you. consider that to be our treat. I got you. I, got, I see what you're and saying. You're saying you do clean eating. And you know all about the clean eating thing. No processed foods and all of that stuff like that. So the Vegetables and water. But I'm, I'm mm-hmm. going to go me a juice fast like that dude did because that, that works. Where we going? I think we should start on um, Monday after Easter. Yeah. So we should do 10 days. Okay. That's but I got to make sure I do juices, though. Like the green drink yeah. stuff. Y'all had done that at one point, yeah. didn't y'all? Yeah. For some reason, it didn't work well for you. I do Because I think you was cheating. <laughs> I do. But you know what I'll do? With, I'll do a discount with protein with the complete violence. You got one yeah. already? I mean, I got some, but I'm going to get some more today. Okay. I'm going to go to GNC and I'm going to get some complete violence. Okay. Kim, did you have a cheat uh-huh. this week? Were you cheating all week? Cause you you just got in on the thing. I've been calling, and harassing you. <laughs> like that, don't you keep it. You better eat all you can today. Your pants is just blowing them off. I think so. See, my phone died. Okay, ladies, I hope y'all enjoyed this little lecture. Um, we all in this Um, so I hope it benefited you somehow or the other. Uh. And we just got to take one day at a time. There's no losing and winning. And when you keep on trying, there's no failure in, in trying and attempting. Um, and, and that's that's what it is. There's no final destination this thing. You got to keep on evolving. Even as we get older, um, our bodies change. And so we still always have to make adjustments. Oh, that's Jackie.
Thank <laughs> you. 